This was my first attempt at a flash steam boiler. It had some promise, but there was a lot wrong with it. Oh my god, it's warm. It's hot. <laughs> For instance, the steam that came out was mixed with water, which is no good at all. So, amongst other things, I need some sort of steam separator that separates the water from the steam. <laughs> You'd think that was easy enough, wouldn't you? Because the steam boils off the top of the water, so you just collect it from above the water and there you go. But there's a problem. The sort of boiler I'm trying to build needs water trickling in all the time because you can't allow it to boil dry ever. But what happens if there isn't enough heat to match the amount of water coming in? Then the water won't be boiled away quick enough and all the pipes will fill up with a spluttery mixture of steam and water. It's easy if you're using a gas flame or some other constant source of heat. You can figure out how much water the heat will boil away. In other words, you can balance the system. But with my log fire stove, the temperature is going to go up and down all the time. So I thought to myself, a float valve is what you need, Tim. As the water boils away, the float drops a little and allows more water in. It should never run dry and it should never get overrun with water either. But this float valve will have to work in a tank of boiling water. Well, actually, there are other ways of arranging it, but let's go with this one for now. So, an ordinary float valve, as you would find in your toilet system, for instance, wouldn't work because the part where the water is actually shut off is made of plastic and rubber, not to mention all the other plastic parts involved. So I thought I'd better make one myself using only metal parts, because why not? <laughs> Perhaps you could buy them, but I couldn't find one. And even if I could, it would probably take weeks to get here. You lot living in America or in Britain have no idea how long it can take for orders to arrive here. Way out west in Ireland. I ordered some glass tube from Scotland a while ago. It took six weeks to get here. From Scotland. Scotland's just over there. <laughs> and the extra import costs doubled the price. So, can I make something with what I already have? I rummaged in my plumbing box. My initial metal pin in a hole plan didn't work because I couldn't push the pin in hard enough. Well, I probably could, but remember, I won't be doing the pushing. I'll be relying on a float to float up and push the pin up into the hole inside a bubbling box of boiling water and steam. The water in the pipe is at approximately two bar of pressure, 30 pounds per square inch. So to stop it coming through the little hole, you need to be able to match that pressure and more. The smaller the hole, the easier it is to close it. So I found an old Irish penny and ground it down to the right size. Then drilled an even tinier hole in the middle. Careful, Tim. Don't break it. And cut a small disc of rubber from my welly to cover it. I know this isn't heat proof, but all the shops were shut, so we'll have to do for now to establish the principle. I cut the rubber disc so there would be a flap of rubber over the hole. So now I have a ring washer, a penny with a hole in it, a flap of rubber welly, and a retaining washer, all held in between two plumbing fittings. And I tried that. First of all, would it allow enough water through the tiny hole and past the flap of rubber? Well, actually, I have no idea how much water I'll need for a steam engine, but it seems plenty for now, doesn't it? 
and then could I close it with a plunger? Yes, although not completely. So I cut a new disc out of smoother metal because I thought that might be the problem and I drilled an even smaller hole 0.7 of a millimeter. 0.7 of a millimeter in imperial measurements is um very small. <laughs> I don't know what it is exactly. And instead of a flap in my rubber disc, I made a small hole off center. This was to leave the perimeter intact. And this time I sandwiched them with fiber washers to stop any leaks around the perimeter. Now the plunger has to push the rubber onto the tiny metal hole. Not near the tiny little hole, but on it. So I had to find a way to line up the plunger. I drilled out the brass fitting and used a cut off bolt for now, tapered at the end. Stainless steel would be better, of course. I drilled through everything so I could hold the plunger in place with wire and still allow it to move up and down. Some soggy experimentation demonstrated that this new valve could turn off the water with pressure generated by submerging two litres of air. <laughs> Excellent! Success! Finally! So then, I made a metal box to put it all in. I cut off some pipe. And cut out some simple shapes on my CNC machine. Although I did manage to cut the first one too thick to allow for the fitting and the first ring plate didn't quite fit but eventually I got it all welded together with my excellent MIG welder although I should have left more space behind the bolts for the weld. And I found a couple of empty paint tins to act as floats for the test. I know they'll expand in boiling water and rust away, but I might have thought of an alternative by then. This is a cold water test. There's a hole in the top plate to let the water out if the valve fails. I turned it on and nothing much happened, which is a good thing. The valve seems to be holding. So now to add some heat, but not before I glued down the paint tin lids and commandeered a silicon rubber baking mold, don't tell anyone, to replace the disc of weathy rubber. It's heat proof, so it should work. And I found some heat proof gunk for the top plate seal too. And then away we went. Now, you're probably thinking, what a waste of time. And anyway, what's it all for, Tim? Well, this float valve works as a water inlet regulator and a steam separator at the same time. 
and both those things are crucial parts of my new design for a steam boiler. A steam boiler that produces superheated dry steam, possibly for driving an engine of some kind. Hmm, possibly. So this might not look like much, but this could be really exciting. Of course, we're not there yet. This steam needs to be heated up a lot more to be useful. And I want to replace the gas burner with a wood stove. But look, no more water with your steam. Pretty neat, huh? That's a pun, by the way, just saying. Tune in next time for the next thrilling instalment. And I promise, if all goes well, there will be smoke and sparks.